more why in LeBron James' name hasn't the Kyrie Irving trade gone through yet? The short answer, as expected, the condition of Isaiah Thomas' right hip is holding up the deal. The Cleveland Cavaliers examined Thomas' re-aggravation of a femoral acetabular impingement with labral tear, say that five times fast, on Friday and spent the weekend mulling further assets from the Boston Celtics as compensation for concerns over the physical, per ESPN. Calms Adrian Wojnarowski. The long answer involves a whole lot of juicy speculation that the Cavaliers are playing games with their Eastern Conference rivals before the season even begins. So, let's get to the good stuff, shall we? The Celtics have been transparent about Thomas' injury. After Boston announced the injury during its conference finals showdown with Cleveland, Thomas told reporters at his exit interview immediately following the series that his right hip has always been a little different my whole life. Throughout the summer, the Celtics brass kept the public abreast of Thomas' status. Initially, Boston president of basketball operations Danny Ainge warned that a determination on surgery would have to wait until swelling subsided. At the end of June, Celtics coach Brad Stevens said the decision was still a couple of weeks away. By early July, Stevens felt more confident surgery would be unlikely, and by the end of the month Ainge told the Boston Globe that Thomas would not require surgery. Still, on the eve of the agreement that would send Thomas, Jay Crowder, Antti Zizek and the Brooklyn Nets unprotected 2018 first-round pick to Cleveland in exchange for Irving, Ainge told CSN New England's A. Sherrod Blakely that, while the team hoped Thomas would be ready at the start of the season, the two-time All-Star was still slated to undergo additional testing on the hip prior to training camp. It's been a lot of appropriate rest, a lot of rehab, Stevens added during an appearance on a podcast with the Vertical's Chris Mannix. There have been some good strides here certainly in the last month or few weeks, but we're not going to know that until after that early September time frame. We want what's best for Isaiah. We want to make sure that when he is ready to roll, which hopefully is sooner rather than later, that he is ready to roll at his highest level and for the longest possible time, obviously, right? So that's a lot more important to me than anything else. Additionally, the Celtics were required to disclose any relevant health information on this past Tuesday's trade call with the Cavaliers and the league office. Any misrepresentation of Thomas' status could result in the league nixing the deal, forfeiture of draft picks fines up to $1 million and or a suspension of Boston's front office executives, according to Larry Coon's NBA salary cap FAQ. So, it stands to reason Boston both disclosed Thomas' current status and considered that when making its offer to Cleveland. By most accounts, the Cavs did better than anticipated in an Irving deal, considering their own all-star point guard was reportedly threatening to sit out training camp, and one season of Thomas, However healthy he was during a contract year, was merely a sweetener in a deal that included a potential number one overall pick, Crowder's cap-friendly deal and a promising seven-footer. The lack of protection on Brooklyn's pick makes that piece the most important of the trade, a potential franchise cornerstone in a loaded draft and significantly more attractive than any of Cleveland's other reported options. So valuable are unprotected lottery picks that you assume the Celtics did not place any protection on the Nets pick because of the concerns about Thomas Hip. All of which the Athletics' Jason Lloyd reported. One source indicated Saturday the Celtics' final offer was their best offer. There will be no more negotiating. Then, the juices really started flowing. According to Wynarowski, Cleveland is going to try to inquire about a couple of the Celtics' young players, Jalen Brown. Jason Tatum, who they tried to get in the original trade. That is very unlikely, but Boston still has a war chest of future first-round picks of their own and some picks they control from other teams, and Cleveland is going to try to get one more of those to finalize this deal. Unlikely is an understatement. Boston believes Brown and Tatum, both selected third overall with Brooklyn's top pick in the last two drafts, have star potential. So to throw in one of them on top of an already stacked package would be a laughable ask from new Cavaliers general manager Kobe Altman. And from the sound of it, maybe Cleveland's front office is beginning to realize that while the Celtics hold their own picks as well as future first-rounders from the Los Angeles Lakers, Los Angeles Clippers, and Memphis Grizzlies, 
anything beyond a second-round pick as compensation for Cleveland's concerns, whatever they may be, sh.